It's so awesome to be with you, River Point. I want to take a moment to greet everybody watching online, West End, Missouri City, and obviously everybody here in Richmond. We have been uh, on a series called Inside Out. We have been studying the book of Colossians. You also should be at home studying the book of Colossians. I hope you did your homework. Um, today, um, I'm going to be talking about Colossians 3, starting in verse 12 through 14, and uh, regardless if you are a Christian or not, like maybe you were dragged to church, tricked into being here, however you got here, um, I believe that today's message, uh, if you were to apply today's message, what this guy Paul says to a church in Colossae, and I believe what God is saying to us, if you apply this message to your life, I promise you it will change every relationship that you have, and it will change your life from the inside out. And Colossians 3, uh, starting in verse 12, says this, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the dress code for a Christ follower, what to wear. Can we pray for a moment? Father, I thank you so much for this amazing church, and I pray, God, that today you would show us the things that we should put on that resemble a life that has been changed from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Um, have you ever had someone disrespect your outfit? Um, it could be a shirt, it could be a suit, it could be a hat, it could be a dress. Like, like they just saw your outfit and they just said, what in the world are you wearing? I had a buddy over, we were filming some stuff, and he said, hey, can I borrow an ugly t-shirt? I said, sure. Wait a minute. How do you know I have an ugly t-shirt? What's that supposed to mean? The only reason he could ask me that question is because we all have an ugly t-shirt. The question is... Why? Not only do we have an ugly t-shirt, we have ugly jeans, we have ugly pants, ugly dresses, suits that don't fit no more, that we still feel like make us look great. They don't, okay? Why we all don't go burn our ugly clothes? Like why we have nice shirt, nice shirt, ugly shirt that we're keeping for a paint job? I don't know. Like, like why do we have this stuff? I'll never know. Have you ever had someone disrespect not just one of your outfits, but your entire wardrobe, okay? Your entire style is just worthless in their eyes, okay? If you've never had that happen to you, I want to invite you to go to this establishment where I promise you, you will get your entire life and wardrobe disrespected. Now, if you work at this establishment, please don't take anything that I say in the next 60 seconds personally. But this establishment is called Plato's Closet, okay? Here's what happens. Here's how it works. If you've never heard of Plato's Closet, I'm going to lay it out for you, okay? You go through your closet, and you grab all the stuff you don't like anymore, and you go take it to this place, and they're going to give you just a few dollars for, for the stuff you don't even want anymore. So you walk into Plato's Closet with three garbage bags, okay? Key word there garbage, okay, and you walk in, you put it on the counter, and they say, we'll call you in 15 minutes and let you know how much we're going to give you for the stuff you don't even want anymore. They sift through it, and then they keep the stuff that they believe that someone else would spend money on and give the rest of it back to you. There is nothing more embarrassing in life than walking in to Plato's closet with three bags and walking out with three bags. In other words, <laughs> what they're saying is, Everything that you own, not a person on the planet would spend a dollar on, okay? So take this crap back, okay? Like, like you're like, are you serious? Listen, man, you know how much I spent on this at Norse? And they're like, sorry, Forever 21 is like what's in right now, and you're like 35. You're like, listen here, buddy, okay? I, I, can, I can work here if I need it. Like, like, you, like you, it feels personal. You know what? Uh, you may not realize this, but whenever a first-time visitor is checking out a church online, contrary to popular belief, they're not just looking to see who the pastor is. They're not just looking to see when the service times are. They're not even trying to figure out the exact location of the church. The number one thing that they're looking for is what to wear. 
Um, in fact, uh, me and my wife invited a girl to church. We've been inviting her for about a year, and she, and she finally decided to come. And the night before, she called us freaking out, and we're going, what questions is she going to have about church experience? And her number one question was, what do I wear? I mean, you, now, we, we live in a day and age where church has changed. It used to be Sunday best, okay? Uh, if you were preaching, you had to wear a full suit. For some people, even a robe. Um, now, uh, I feel like we have adopted the come just as you are model, okay? Some of you show up in yoga pants. You're going to work out as soon as church is over, okay? Like, like you just come in whatever you feel like wearing. But uh, more than to trying to decide what to wear this morning... I believe that for some of us, the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle that we have as Christ followers is we knew who we were before Christ, B.C., but now that we are Christ followers, we're going, not just what do I wear on my physical body, but what do I put on for my soul? And I love what Paul says to the church of Colossae. He uses the term put on. On, like a garment of clothes. Here is the dress code. Here is what I want you to wear. Now, in the verses before that Patrick covered beautifully last week, he's going, hey, here's the deal. There are some activities and some actions and some characteristics that I want you to take off. And it involves sexual immorality. It involves profanity. It involves lust. And here's what he's saying. He's not going, you're just this big sinner. This is what he's saying. This stuff doesn't look good on you anymore in light of the new resurrection life I've given you. And it says this in the message, um, just to do a recap from last week. He says, don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. See, I told you, we need to burn this stuff. Now, you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All of the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing from now on. Everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. He's going, hey, th these are the things that you've been given resurrection life. And there is a new wardrobe, a new dress code that has been made available to you. And here's, here's how that new wardrobe looks. And it says it like this. It says, so chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Today, I want to talk about these nine things, uh, about each one, uh, uh, I'm going to touch a little bit briefly on each one and talk about what could happen in our life if we decided to wear these things. And, and the first thing um, that, that he says um, is he wants us to wear compassion. Wear compassion. Now, he, here's what, what I know about the world that we live in, is that too often we allow our hearts to get used to tragedy. Don't let your heart get used to tragedy. And, and here's, here's what can happen. I, I remember in 1999 when Columbine's school shooting happened, it wrecked the country. We, we, we all stood in shock. It was on the news for over a week. I mean, it, it moved us. It rocked us. We grieved. It, and do you know that this year, in the year 2018, uh, within the first 21 weeks of the calendar, there were 23 school shootings. 23. And here's what can just happen. Is that bad news can start to feel like normal news. That natural disasters can feel like normal news. Oh, there's a fire, red and count. Oh, okay. See the post, and we continue grocery shopping like it's nothing. Now, if I'm if I'm you, one of the best things that we could do is, is we could we could start off our day by putting on compassion. I, I got to speak in Denver a couple of weekends ago, and there was a girl there who was a freshman in high school when the Columbine shooting happened, and she was hiding under 
the library table fearing for her life. And I just, I'm listening to her story and realizing that there are 23 other communities in our country that are experiencing the same grief. And sometimes it's, it's just because it's been a while doesn't mean everybody's over it or that everybody has recovered. And I just got to walk a mile a little bit in her shoes and just put on compassion just for a moment to just remember and go, man, there are some people that are hurting. And because, just because it didn't happen to me doesn't mean it didn't happen to us. Again, when you imagine what would happen if we decided to be people that were just a little bit more compassionate. I, and I believe that every single one of these things that I'm going to talk about wearing today, one of them is going to stick out to you more than others. One of those things you're going to go, okay, that one's for me. Up, oh, that one, he, he's talking to me. And, and this next one, I, I believe it might be it. He says, wear kindness. Wear kindness. Now, some of y'all are a little mean. So... This one might be, be a tough one for you to go, what? You want me to wear kindness? Yeah, you should try it out. Like, do you know, like, there are some Christians that are just permanently angry, and I'm not sure why. You all have at least one family member or friend that is not a Christian because they met a Christian, okay? And, like, they met this guy, and they were so angry. They met this gal, and she was so judgmental, and it's just like, why are you angry? You mean to tell me? Jesus Christ left heaven, died on a cross for your sins, and you get to go to heaven now, and you are mad about it? Like, like it's heaven or hell. This is serious business. You get to go to heaven, okay? Like, like wh why are you upset? I mean, if you just think about just putting on kindness, I believe it changes the world. And here, here's what it says in Romans. It says, or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Listen, if you really want to share your faith with somebody else, I believe the best way that you can do that is with kindness. And I can prove it. Um, every single person under the sound of my voice thoroughly enjoys great customer service. If there ain't not one person in here that's been in the Chick-fil-A line and they hear my pleasure, that doesn't make you go, man, it's your pleasure, man. That's kind of nice. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> oh, man, that's nice of you. Your pleasure, huh? For my lemonade, man, that's nice, man. Get me at the money back. Man, why don't you order a couple chicken nuggets for yourself on me? Like, it just makes us feel good. Okay, it doesn't matter where you go, whether it's a car dealership, it's the mall, it's a restaurant. We all love great customer service. Guess what? They were paid and trained to be nice to you. Imagine if we did it for free. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. Imagine if we were people that every morning we wore kindness and said, I'm going to go out of my way to be kind to somebody. People are going to think that you're crazy. But whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean you weren't trained to do this? You mean you're not paid to be nice to me? No. And in fact, I'm not even that kind of a person, if I'm honest. But guess what? I experienced kindness from a God that I did not deserve. And so I'm just extending what was given to me to other people. So yes, your Starbucks is on me today. Can you imagine if we all wore kindness? Now here's the deal. When I go do seminars and talks and keynotes in corporate America, I talk about this all the time. Why? Because it works and people are like, CEOs are like, dude, that was genius. I'm like, yeah, yeah, be nice to people. It's a crazy concept. I know. <laughs> I'm a genius. I don't know what to tell you. Where'd you get that stuff, man? It's a great concept. Ah, Bible, whatever, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you would be surprised how many people live in, a, in their minds a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And, and when you go, hey, imagine if the person you're competing against the most, you treat it with utmost kindness. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, try it right now. Find somebody in this room you don't like and go compliment them. They're like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, just see what happens. Try it. They're like, oh, nice tie. And they're like, oh, nice shoes. And all of a sudden, they start helping each other. I'm like, man, this, this isn't just a, a great Bible idea. Man, this is a great idea for life. Um, and and here's, here's another one that he said, put on. Humility. This one's a tough one for a lot of us, and there's a lot of people that can't stay married because one spouse couldn't put this on. 
They couldn't do it. It was way too difficult for them to put it on. And I promise you, when you do it, every relationship you have is going to change. Now, I'm going to teach you how to wear humility, all right? You ready for this? Listen, one of the best ways to wear humility is to use these words twice a week. I'm wrong. Now, listen, I realize, I realize that some of you have never used these words. And so we're going to do it all together, okay, right now. On the count of three, we're all going to say, I'm wrong. Now, here's the deal. Don't look at your spouse right now. I need you to look at me, okay? Eyes up here. <laughs> Eyes up here, class, okay? I want you to all look at me, all right? Even if you're watching online, okay, I want you to do this together, all right? We're all going to say it, all right? Now, you can practice on your spouse later, but right now, it's just me, okay? One, two, three. I'm wrong. Woo! How do you feel? How do you feel? See? It's not that hard. But man, isn't it sometimes hard when you really, really think that you're right? I mean, how many of us have started an apology to somebody because we're trying to get an apology from them? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, it's really all their fault, but you're just like, oh, I'll take 10% blame so I can get your 90% here real fast, you know? <laughs> but the test of your humility is when you apologize and expect nothing in return. And, and it's when you're going, you know what, I, I'm sorry for my 10%. And when they walk away scot-free and they go, thank you for your apology, you're like, um, excuse me, I believe you have a few things <laughs> yourself that you could be apologizing for. But that's the test. That's the real test. And, and here's the deal. Just because you're right in your mind doesn't make you humble. And so for you, whether it's work-related, whether it's in your home, I think at least twice a week you should be using these two words. This should be a part of your vernacular, and I know it's tough, but just to every now and then look at a person that you really want to be right with and go, I'm wrong. To look at somebody that is inferior to you on the org chart and to go, your idea was the right idea and my idea was the wrong idea. And for you to go, man, I, I'm humble enough to go, man, I, I'm going to put this on. The other thing that he says is, is to wear quiet strength. And what I love about this is whenever we feel unappreciated, undervalued, and unseen, we feel a deep propensity to flex. We feel a deep temptation to show others who we are, to prove ourselves to other people. And could you imagine if you woke up in the morning, you just put on quiet strength and went, I don't have to prove anything to anybody today. Some of you have posted about your vacation just to show people that you can afford a vacation. When you actually didn't even enjoy your vacation, you posting pictures about the beach and you can't even swim. Okay, like it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but you're going, no, 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 there's a person that I want to see this photo. You're going, man, imagine, here's the deal. Have you ever seen a buff dude yell out, I'm strong? He doesn't have to. We can see it. His shirt's too small. Like, dude, we know. <laughs> In other words, if you have to tell me you're strong, you're probably not strong at all. And imagine, imagine if you were the type of person that was able to go to work, that was able to hang out with your friends and not have to brag about anything. Imagine if you could spend time with your boss without going, well, I really hope that he sees. No, 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 here's the deal. What if you were doing such a good job that the people that you serve at work and, and the customers that, that you serve as well, they're going, they're doing such a good job, I had to call their boss. I had to call their boss and go, this person deserves a raise. And, and I love what Proverbs says. It says, let someone else praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. If you work in retail, let me get, let's, just, let's just think about this logically for a second. Do you think which is a better plan? You walking into your boss's office and going, hey, man, I've been loyal. I've been here 10 years, man. I deserve a raise. Or a customer that you help so well that they send an email to your boss and go, hey, this is this person's badge number. They served me, and here's the story. I was having a horrible day, and this employee of yours changed my life. They deserve a raise. Which one do you think is going to work better for you? But the only way that's going to happen is if you wear quiet strength and let somebody else praise you. And some of you think you live in a world that if you don't praise yourself, nobody else 
will. But can you imagine if you just said, I'm going to wear quiet strength and just do a really, really great job and let my life do the talking and trust God with my advancement and trust God with my promotion and trust God with my elevation and put him in charge of my career. I'm just going to be a steward of the position he's given me right now. When we put on quiet strength, I think it changes the game for everybody. Here's the other thing that he tells us to wear. Discipline. Now, this one's a tough one for me because the area that I needed the most discipline in was in the area of food. Now, over the past three months, um, I've gotten extremely healthy and and I've started to, I've had to every morning wear discipline. Now, you got to understand something, y'all. I love food. I love fast food. I love slow food. I, 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 I love dessert. I love breakfast, lunch. Din- I mean, I, I, I love it all. I, I, it, it is the moments in the day that I look forward to the most is when I'm eating. I love candy. I love cereal. All kinds. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cheerios, uh, Frosted Flakes, Wheaties, Breakfast of Champ. You, you name it. Like, I just love food. But... For me to be the person that I actually want to be in the future, part of me wearing discipline was falling out of love with food. And I'm telling you, it, it, is, it is so hard. And, and, and you got all these different health experts that tell you all types of stuff. That, like I, I haven't had pop, soda, whatever you call it. I haven't had that in four months. And, and somebody, somebody said, I don't know who it was, but they said, that eventually, once you kind of detox yourself from this, you will lose the craving for said things that you love dearly. That's a lie, okay? <laughs> because I want a Coke right now. Like, if somebody brought me a Coke right now, I'd be sitting there like, okay, should I end with prayer now? Like, I just, like, like I'm not making this up. Last night, I had a dream that I was running, and I had a backpack, and it wasn't water in there. It was Pepsi, okay? And I was... <laughs> I thought it was real, and I was like, I can't believe I fell for temptation, and it was awesome. Okay, like, like, but I, I have to, I have to wear discipline, and so, and so now I, I get four cheat meals a week. I, I've lost about 22 pounds, and it, and it's not because I was trying to lose weight, but it's because I'm trying to be healthy, and I have to put on discipline. I travel a lot, and that makes it difficult to continue to to eat healthy. One time, I'm getting ready to go to the airport. And, and I had kind of mapped out my meals for the week, and I realized I had to grill some veggies, put it in aluminum foil, put it in, in a little, you know, styrofoam case, and, and take it through the airport. And that's kind of embarrassing in the airport when everybody else is in line at Whataburger and everybody else is in line at Chick-fil-A. I'm like, must be nice to live your life free as an American, and I'm over here suffering for the cause of Christ. <laughs> it's not fun, but but you know the game. You know the game. Like... When you decide, you know what, you, you listen to this right now, you're going, you know what, he's right. I'm, I'm, I need to eat healthy. And tomorrow morning's breakfast is going to be healthy. And then here's what's going to happen. 12 o'clock, that's what's going to happen. And you're going to find yourself in line at Whataburger talking about some, let me get a number five. Okay, like you're just, it, it's just and, and here's the rationale. You're going to go, I was so good this morning, I deserve a great lunch, okay? Like, it's the mentality that we all have. And then dinner, like, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to get a salad. And then you're at a restaurant, and you're going, why would I pay to go out to not enjoy my food? No, I'm getting something that's actually good. Like, why would I? Or, like, we do these games in our mind, but can you imagine if every morning we put on discipline? And for some of you, it, it has nothing to do with food. It has everything to do with money. For some of you, it's not money. It has everything to do with relationships. You keep dating the wrong type of person and you need to put discipline on. You need to get some accountability in your life to say, you know what, this is something that I need to put on. And, and I, I, love, I love this quote. It says, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. I don't know who said it, but it was somebody awesome and it wasn't me. And I'm trying to wear humility right now, so don't quote me and be like, Ryan said this awesome thing today. It was somebody else. But, but think about that for a second. All of us have some sort of goals, and I promise you, the, the, the thing that's going to lead you there, the bridge that's going to get you to accomplish that goal is discipline. Here is uh, the other thing that he says where. He says, where emotional stability, be even-tempered. 
Um, you can have emotions, but don't let your emotions have you. Now, here's what I realized about each and every one of us. We all work with somebody that just gets on our nerves. And they trigger us into to having this emotional downward spiral that you were never meant to have. You work with, with a Keisha, a Tanya, and a Larry, and a Greg, and they all drive you a little bit crazy. But here's what I had to make a decision to do a long time ago. I refuse to let somebody else ruin my day. I refuse. Like, I was having a perfectly good day, and then I ran into you. Now, I'm not going to let what, when I ran into you affect the rest of my whole day, my night, my, my whole week. And I'll never forget, I was in seventh grade, and I, I was talking with a small group leader late at night, and, and they were like, hey, how, how was your day? And I said, man, it was a horrible day. And they were like, man, horrible day. Wow, man, what happened? You're in seventh grade. Not much can happen, you know. And so I'm like, oh, it was bad, man, real bad. He's like, tell me about it. And I was like, man, so, man, about 1030 this morning, somebody said something about my mama in class. Man, I didn't appreciate that. And, you know, I don't even know what it was, but it was, it was really small enough for him to go, you know what? That doesn't sound like a bad day. It sounds like a bad moment that you allowed to be a bad day. You know what I learned right then and there? To keep things in perspective. To keep it in the moment. Because I believe that there is somebody under the sound of my voice that has stumbled into the building today that allowed one bad moment to turn into a bad day, that turned into a bad week, that turned into a bad year, and now you find yourself thinking you have a bad life. And it all started with a moment. And I wonder if we could just step out and get a 30,000-foot perspective on our life and just to go, man, let that moment be the moment. But why should I let that arrest and put the rest of my life and paralyze my dreams and hopes? Why would I do that? No, I, I've decided I'm going to be an even-tempered person. I've decided that I'm going to have some emotional stability in the sense of like, you know, I'm going to go to work and I realize that there are people in this world that have the ability to trigger me into being the person I don't want to be. But I've already made my decision. I'm going to put on emotional stability. I'm going to be an even-tempered person. Here's the other thing that he says, wear. This is a great, great for our wardrobe. He says, wear contentment. He said, be content with second place. And, and I just... I love this because here's what I want you to see. The moment comparison starts is the moment contentment is lost. It's when uh, we don't find ourselves dissatisfied with our life or our position until we look at somebody else. And we see their highlights and we go, oh, man, it must be nice over there. But can you imagine... If before you went to work, before you walked out the door to go be the teacher, to go be the CEO, to go be the mom on the go, you just put on contentment and just said, you know what, Lord, you've given me a position. May I be a good steward of right where I'm at and let that be the thing that consumes me the most to just go, you know what, I, I've got hopes and I've got dreams, but I, I know I can't get there unless I steward where I'm at well first. So let me do really well here, and may I not live my life trying to compete with those around. And again, comparison isn't always bad, and I think comparison can get a bad reputation sometimes. Sometimes comparison allows you to go, all right, how, how, well am I, how, how well am I doing? And comparison can help you get better. Most of the time, though, comparison will make you not better but bitter. And you find yourself going, man, why isn't my life, and why isn't? There, there, you have to have a healthy perspective on comparison to really find yourself in a place of contentment. And I encourage each and every one of us to be able to put on contentment on a daily basis. Here's a, another thing that he says where. He says, wear forgiveness. Wear forgiveness. And here's a life principle I, I want you to adopt. And if you do this, I promise you it changes the game for you. Decide to forgive people before they hurt you. Decide to forgive people before they hurt you. And here's why. Colossians 3 verse 13 says this. Make allowances for each other's faults. In other words, keep a little bit of grace in your back pocket for other people. The way I like to translate it, expect people to be stupid. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. In fact, you need to wait for Larry, Keisha, Greg, time. Like, listen, you know this week 
There is somebody at your job, somebody in your home that is going to do something dumb, okay? Wait for it. Expect it. The, the thing that you're struggling with right now is it keeps catching you off guard, and you are legitimately shocked that they said it. You're like, what? Well, what? No. And then, but if you wait to the moment to respond, it's too late to be the person you actually want to be. It's too late. But this is how, if I'm you, this is how I would walk into the office this week. Who's it going to be today? Who's it going to be today? Bill, you got a problem? Larry, how you, I, I want you to act a fool today. Like, like you just, you waiting for him. And you're going, listen, I'm going to give you the same grace. Not because I'm a graceful person. No, 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 no. Not because I'm a forgiving person. No, 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 no. No, I just encountered a forgiving God. And so I'm going to extend to you what has already been extended to me. And I've decided how I'm going to respond to you before you do the thing that I know is going to make me upset. This is how you defuse the bomb, ladies and gentlemen. Some of us are waiting for the mine, to step on the landmines and wait for them to go off. And then we're doing damage control. And now we're firefighters. And we're, no, 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 no. Like, I, I've already made up my mind how I'm going to respond before it happens. And when we do this, it changes the game. And here is the last thing that he tells us to wear. Wear love. And here's the beautiful part about love. Love goes with every outfit you put on. Love goes with every outfit you put on. No matter, no matter what you got to wear, you wear love. And here, here's the deal. I know we all have difficult people in our life. And here's the reality. You are the difficult person in somebody else's life. <laughs> I am the difficult person in somebody else's life. And so here's the plan. Like, if, if we're sitting down, we're getting coffee, and you want to go, man, what do I do with this person, man? I don't know what to do with this person. I work with them. I live with them. I married them. This is my kid. You're going, all right, they're, they're difficult. Here's the plan. Love everybody. Here's the plan. Love them. Love them. Yeah, you're like, but dude, I really don't like this person. They don't really like me. You know what's really going to get on their nerves? When you love them. So if you really want to get them, love them like crazy. Buy your enemy coffee. Why would I do that? Ah, it's this crazy concept called love your enemy. Who would have thought? Jesus. Can you imagine if you wore this stuff? I want to put the verse back up. I want you to see it again. Here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look this up on the Bible app. I want you to look it up on, on your phone. I'll make this your screensaver. Hey, print this out at your house. Put it up in your closet. Put it right next to your suits. Put it right next to your dress. Put it, put it in your gym bag. Like right, right before you get to go be who you believe you are, remind yourself of who you really are. Put this on and, and, and decide. Like, and, and here's the deal. When you, when you get ready to go to work and you know you got a meeting with Keisha, you know you got a meeting with Tanya, you know you got a meeting with Larry, you go, you know what, today with my blue suit, I think I probably should put on, you know, I think I'm going to wear even tempered today. You know, you got date night, you're like, man, they've been getting on my nerves. Uh, you know what? I'm going to try using those two crazy words tonight. I'm wrong. You're like, oh, man, I really don't want to work out today, but what if I decided to wear discipline today? Here, here's what I know to be true. There is not a person in the building under the sound of my voice that doesn't want to date this type of person. There's nobody here that doesn't want to marry this type of person. There's nobody here that doesn't want to stay married to this type of person. There's nobody here that doesn't want to work for this person, that doesn't want to work with this person, that doesn't want to hire this person, that doesn't want to promote this person. This is who we want serving us at restaurants. This is who we want serving us at the mall. This is who we want to work out with. This is who we want to do life with. We want to go out to eat with this person. Think about it if we all decided to wear this. Man, I believe if we did that, it would change us from the inside out. I believe that is the life that is available to us as Christ followers. I believe that is resurrection life. We get to put on something new. We get to take off all of that old stuff. Man, I encourage you as you go through this week, Monday through Saturday, not to put on your Sunday's best, but maybe for you, you got to wear a little bit of compassion and kindness. Maybe for you, you have to wear a little bit 
of humility. Whichever one stuck out to you the most, no matter what you do, love goes with every outfit that you have. And I believe when we do it, it changes us from the inside out. Father, I thank you so much for this amazing church. I pray, God, that you would continue to show us the dress code for what it means to be a Christ follower. Lord, continue to show us what to put on on a daily basis because these are the things that you decided to be to us. So help us be that to the world around us. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen.